friends. So I hope you guys are having a great week and I cannot wait to share the latest episode with you guys. And if you have been looking for a tangible example of how you can build your business without using social media, you have found the perfect inspiration in today's interview with Brianne Bell. So whether you have a medical background or a network marketing background or even any business model in between, you will absolutely love hearing her story, especially if you are a mama trying to balance all the things and feeling pulled and distracted in a bunch of different ways, but yet you long for something that creates more freedom in your life in all the areas. You'll absolutely love hearing from Brianne. So can't wait to dive into today's episode and let me know what you think. Are you dreaming of making a long-term income and impact beyond your own efforts, but feel like you're struggling to replicate your results? I'm Heather, a former burned out boutique owner turned top network marketing leader, and I've learned the hard way that you don't have to do all the things all on your own. Now, my passion is helping social sellers scale their business by choosing faith over fear and using simple duplicatable systems without having to sell your soul to social media. I'm so excited to share with you simple tips, tricks, and tools to help you take your business to the next level. In each episode, I'll share faith-focused wisdom, proven systems that your team can duplicate, and inspiring stories from other leaders who have been right where you are today. Are you ready to grow your team, find joy and fulfillment, and feel free? Break out your favorite pen and notebook, and let's dive in. All right, friends, I am so excited for you to meet the next rock star from my interview series and sharing some valuable tips from others who are along the entrepreneurial journey, whether or not they are or aren't building their business without social media. And today you guys are in for a huge treat because Miss Brianne Bell, who I had the pleasure of meeting in a recent podcast course that we'll tell you all about um, in just a bit, but she and I connected and she is a, a fabulous host of the Passive Income Nurse podcast. And she is just such a beautiful soul inside and out. And she does have a background in both network marketing, obviously within the medical industry as well. And she is now building a passive income through her podcast, all with the help of some of the wisdom that we have both learned together through these programs. So I can't wait for y'all to get to know Brianne and to share your story. So Brianne, thank you for being here. Thank you, Heather, for having me. I'm so excited to connect and share my story and yeah, all the things. So thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Well, Brianne, for those that are listening um, that don't know you, tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, your life growing up, all the good things. Yeah, I'd be excited to. So I am a wife and a mom of two little boys who are wild and crazy, dirt bike riding, baseball playing little boys. <laughs> I have been a nurse for 15 years, which is crazy to say that, but we are uh, currently on a debt-free journey. And I don't know if I've shared this with you, Heather, but we are currently living in our 300 square foot, tiny living space in our cover <laughs> on, yeah, on 10 acres of property. And I am currently figuring out how I am going to survive this summer as we are in the last week of school wrapping up around here. So <laughs> yes, it is an adventure over here. <laughs> That is an amazing adventure. And wow, what what a cool story that I know will be so inspiring. And what a great way to kick off. Actually, on this podcast, I, I very much plan to dive more into some of the debt-free principles. And so I love that you're bringing it up. And I'd love to talk more about that in a minute. But which specifically in nursing, which which type of medicine have you been practicing? And, and what does that look like now for you? Yeah, so I ironically landed in the emergency room right out of nursing school and I like to say that the ER chose me I did not choose the ER it was just kind of a position that was open and as a new nurse I saw it as a great opportunity to get some experience so I started out in the emergency room I ended up falling in love with it and so yeah I stayed in the ER for a couple of years had my first son And then when I added, or when we had our second son, we added our uh, second son in 2013, I found myself in this place where it was like trying to balance the craziness and the chaos of the ER and trying to balance the craziness and chaos at home. And it was too much. So kind of from there, I ventured into doing home health, working in doctor's offices and kind of, you know, looking for that flexibility in my schedule to be able to work 
you know, the good hours, the quote unquote good hours, the daytime hours um, around my family schedule. And so from there, I actually ventured into the online space probably about five years ago. And, and so since then, I have not actively been working inside of healthcare. Um, I have been a stay at home mom and a work from home mom. And so, yeah, I ventured into the, like you had mentioned in the beginning in the network marketing space about five years ago and really loved or fell in love really with the opportunity of that. Cause I was that mom that wanted that, like, I loved working in the ER, but the 12 hour shifts, the craziness, I had to find something different. And when I came across the opportunity to be able to work from home around my kids' schedule, have that freedom, have that flexibility to kind of, you know, build this thing, I kind of dove all in. And so that's kind of what introduced me to the to the online space. And then from there, I ventured into the podcasting space. And now I focus on serving nurses who are looking to, di to diversify their income. So. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I love this. <laughs> Such a perfect fit for the podcast, given that you have built that passive income business through network marketing, which obviously I'm super yeah. passionate about. But then what's cool is then you're taking all of that knowledge coupled with your nursing experience and background, and now you're paving a different road with podcasting to diversify your own income and even better show other people how to do that. So how, like, what made you decide to dive into podcasting? Like, where did that kind of come from? Yeah, so... As I shared with you before we hopped on, I went all in on my network marketing business and I committed and I'm a very driven person and I did everything that I was told to do. My upline, you know, she held my hand. A lot of that was showing up on social media. And so through that, I was showing up on social media every single day in my stories, posting on my feed, doing all the lives, all the things. And I did that for three years. And so through that, I will say that I learned so much. I learned so much from that experience. It may, like I made some awesome friends. I found a community of like-minded women. I traveled. I got to go to some really cool places. And I can truly say that the opportunity in stepping into that space truly transformed me. It stretched me. It challenged me. Changed my mindset. But I got burnt out on social media. I'm um, showing up every day, multiple times a day for three years. And it wasn't until the pandemic hit. I think we all have our COVID story. <laughs> like it was like, <laughs> and then kind of a uh, pandemic hit. And I really had to evaluate my time that I was spending on social media. I had always justified being on social media that I was investing in my business and that even though I was robbing time from my family and I was like hyper distracted, I wasn't present. And so when COVID hit, it forced me to evaluate what I was doing. Now kids are home. Like I can't sustain this. And so like I literally prayed and I said, God, I'm trying to build this business. I'm doing this for my family and I'm investing so much time and energy into this but I know I can't sustain it. And so I know my kids are coming home and wouldn't help be their teacher, their counselor, their principal, amongst all the other things, right? So it was so clear. I did not even question it. I had so much peace about it. It was like, your kids are your priority. And so from there, I literally, I laid social media down, I laid it down and I laid it down until like I took, six months off and like until my kids like transitioned back into the school system I was committed to being home with them to you know being their teacher all the things and during that time I prior to that I had podcasting on my heart I didn't really know what it looked like I was really going to go in the direction like I thought I wanted to do something around health and wellness because that's what I'm passionate about and so once I had the like headspace and the the time that I wasn't spending on social, I'd laid that down to really process this. And then the kids transitioned back in the school. It's like, okay, I'm I'm ready to do this podcasting thing. I don't know what it's gonna look like, but I'm ready to go all in on that. So I did and I took a podcasting course, which you're familiar with. You actually took as well to start to learn all about the podcasting space. And 
ironically enough, I was going in that direction. I was going to be talking about health and wellness. Like I went through the entire course with this health and wellness focus. And then God was like, you're going this way and you're going to serve nurses and you're going to, you know, focus on, you know, passive income and helping them, you know, have, learn how to create freedom and flexibility in their schedule and all this. And so that's kind of the direction I went. And it's just been so freeing, honestly, to not have to show up on social media, to let podcasting be my platform and to show up here and just to be able to serve and be focused in this one direction and not be hyper distracted and to have this time, like literally going through all of that, like, obviously I think there's lessons and purpose inside of everything that we go through and what we do. It's made me more intentional with my time now. Like I only do my podcasting stuff. I only focus on that stuff when my kids are at school. And like right now, I am literally batch recording all of my episodes for the summer really? because they're going to be home. And like being in this tiny living space, I don't know what that's going to look like. So I, you know, I don't want like when they're home from school, I'm done. And so it's, it, it really just made me look at my life and like what really like what did I want my life to look like because I was truly building something that I didn't even like it it wasn't sustainable and I don't even know that I would have wanted to sustain that that if I would have you know gotten to the level of what everything I had on my vision board looked like you know it was like all these goals that were me focused and I really feel like with the podcast like this is something that God is truly saying like this is direction like this is the way I walk in it and so I'm just being obedient to that and you know we'll see where it goes (laughs) wow oh my gosh I love all of that so much and you mentioned something, and I'm curious if you read the book, Be Where Your Feet Are. Have you heard or read about that book? Mm-hmm. Have, yes. Is that, was, yeah. Yeah, is that in, kind of an inspiration for really getting clear on what you wanted your life to look like? Yeah, it actually, so I read that book. Actually, I think it was during the pandemic and it was a good, it was a good focus book and just really shedding some light on that intentionality behind everything that you do, right? It's like, my kids drive me crazy a lot of the times, but it's like, I need to be present where my feet are. Like if my kid, like, I don't want it. it, it, And also it's what you're modeling for them, right? Like I, and being on your phone and being distracted and, you know, they're begging for your attention and your face is planted in your phone. And so I never wanted to be that mom that was distracted, ignoring my kids and modeling that behavior for them. Because I think in our society that they're growing up in, there's so much that we have to battle. Mm -hmm. There's so much. And with instant gratification being one of them. Like I struggle with that with my oldest. It's like, he doesn't know what a commercial, they had Netflix Mm -hmm. and they have YouTube. They can skip the ads and it's like instant. They need everything instantly. And so really just that's something I've been working on too, with like just being present with my feet are and really being intentional with my time that I, you know, that I have with them because it's really it's so true. It's like, you hear it all the time and it sounds so so like cliche, but it's like the days are long, but the years are short. And so I'm really just trying to embrace that and build a business that reflects the life that I want to live. Oh my goodness. Amen to that. And I just, it's so funny how the Lord shows up with those little, like, you know, kind of God winks of, of, I guess, duplicate (laughs) concepts or ideas or even books. Uh, Scott O'Neill, who wrote the book, Be Where Your Feet Are, he actually just spoke at our company conference or our virtual conference, which is crazy. I I was like, oh my gosh, that's that book, which I actually haven't had a chance to read. So I definitely um, would love to read it. And I love that both that. And then also Stephanie Gass or Steph Gass, that's actually how you and I met. As you said, we both did the, she has a course called a podcast to profit P2P. And that's exactly how I dove into podcasting. Actually, I started with another podcast called Stories of Light. And I interviewed Steph. I'll make sure to link that in the show notes for anybody who is listening to this. If they want to hear a little bit of Steph's story, 
But tell me more about how you found Stephanie, how you got plugged into her awesome programs like Podcast to Profit. She also has one called Clarify Your Calling or CYC. And then mm-hmm. what we just wrapped up was Podcast to Profit, which was a very, I felt like I was like taking a college, like MBA course in podcasting. I don't know about you. Yes. By far the best part of it was the relationships that, that we have built through our pod. So how did you find Steph? Um, did you do all the courses and what is, what, how did that impact um, your journey? Yeah. So ironically, I came across Stephanie Gass in 2018 when I was in the thick of building my network marketing business. And she actually had an Instagram course, (laughs) um, which is funny, right? Knowing where she is now. Um, But I should note on that, like she is, she was one of the inspirations for me stepping into my confidence to do an entire podcast based on scaling without social because she teaches us you don't have to right so which is funny because she's obviously pivoted pivot is a good thing yeah. <laughs> so, yes rough. yes so she she has been in my life I guess since back then on a small scale but yeah so I I purchased her Instagram course and was really focused on growing my network marketing business over on Instagram And so that was my first touch with Steph. And then from there, I kind of, you know, got really just distracted on growing my business on social media and doing all the things. And it wasn't until I believe the end of 2020 that I really like dove into where she is now. So she had since, I think she started a podcast maybe three years ago. And so from there, she kind of pivoted into you know, she was in network marketing herself. She was climbing the ranks. She was doing all the things. And then, so she's kind of pivoted into the space of really serving the entrepreneur, the Christian entrepreneur who is looking to start their business in the online space. And I just kind of binged to listen to her episodes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this podcasting thing. It's been on my heart. And that's really what she talks about is like being able to leverage growing and scaling your business in the online space through podcasting. And so I was like, oh my gosh, this is like what I need to be doing. And so from there, I just kind of binge listened all of her episodes and dove right into her programs. And actually I did not take Clarify Your Calling, but I, I wish, and I may even still go back and take it because I think it's just such a foundational course that you can continually go back to, to help you uncover Like, what is God calling you to do? And in different seasons, it's going to be different things, right? Like, that's why we pivot. That's why we give ourselves permission to, you know, when we see or see an opportunity or hear something, we know that it's okay. Like, okay, this is, I need to go this way. And so clarify your calling really helps you with that foundational piece of uncovering, like, what are your skills? What are your gifts? What are your talents? What are your, what are your life experiences that you can really dive into and uncover and how can you use them in the online space to be able to serve others to be able to make an impact and to ultimately be able to change someone's life and so I love that course for that exact reason it's rooted in you know biblical foundations of really partnering with God and figuring out how you can show up and serve others. And ultimately, I feel like every single one of us is on this earth for that exact purpose, to figure out like, what is God calling us to do and how can we show up and serve others? And I heard it in a sermon one time, like how can we provide this excellent environment for people to be able to bump into Jesus? Like that's our goal in life. And so really this is a foundational course that helps you do that, which is getting clarity on your calling. And then she has the other course, which is Podcast Pro University, which I always get mixed up with Podcast to Profit. Oh Podcast Pro University. <laughs> is her course an amazing, just step by step way for you to be able to take whatever that is that you've gotten clarity on and turn that into an online business in the online space for, and use using podcasting to be able to show up as you know, this is your platform that you're going to be serving others. You're going to be sharing all of your information. And it's the prime environment for people to want to learn from you. So think about like showing up on social media. People are not in the mindset to learn from you. They want to be entertained. They're not there to learn and they're not in the mindset of learning. They're not in the mindset of purchasing from you. 
And so in the podcasting space, it positions you at a place where number one, you own it. You, you own the content. It's not like social media where it could be gone tomorrow and all of your followers are lost and you have no contact with them. So you own the platform or you own the content rather. And people are coming to podcasts, to listening. Why are you listening to this podcast? Because you want to grow and scale your business off of social media. You're coming here to learn something. You're coming here to grow. You're coming here to be inspired. And so she really helps you just set up every piece of that. And really there's, it's not hard. There's just a lot of moving pieces. And I don't know about you, but if I can have it all packaged in one little sweet little course, I will buy it all day long because it just simplifies things. It saves you time. And if it saves you time, it's worth the investment. And so, yeah, I went through that course. And then the natural next step was to move into, she has a mastermind program. That's a podcast of profit, which Heather was talking about. Like, it's literally like an immersive course, college course, an intense course where you're doing homework. You're doing all of these moving pieces of market research and figuring out like, you know, the number one problem that you're going to show up and solve and then really how you can leverage using um, SEO and how to title your episodes and just so many moving pieces that really just puts it into a business model for you to be able to monetize. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. And it's been such a game changer for me. I was going to look at my stats. I want to say um, taking that course tripled my downloads it's it's i know you've created greatly right like just by getting getting mm-hmm. that a high level high level kind of instruction from the best <laughs> right and i totally agree podcast pro university ppu was i mean i used it not once but twice and that's the cool thing about the course model is you you can reference it anytime and it it does it outlines like for any of you guys who've ever thought about starting a podcast it's really cool especially if you're like me and could talk for for days <laughs> It's a really cool way to share your gifts, your your story, and create a conversation around your passions and, and your calling, especially as you've done that. So I love that. And like I said, I love that she, that it connected us with um, each other. This is mm-hmm. so awesome. So you touched on this a little bit with your, you know, that you are now not using social media. So do, do are you completely off of it? Like what does social media look like for your business right now? Yeah. So social media is, I am not active on social media. As far as when I say active, I'm not posting. I do leverage Facebook. I have groups that I'm a part of. I am very disciplined in getting on there and going right into the group because I'm the type of person, like if I start on one story, yep, (laughs) I'm going, I'm going and I'm watching all of them. And then, you know, 30 minutes have gone by and I'm like, what am I doing? And so I have to be really intentional with when I'm getting on there and what I'm getting on there for. I have a group that is for nurses and mostly my podcast listeners just kind of congregate in there. And so I can go in there intentionally and I'm using that to build the relationship and I'm really using it as a tool and not really the, the, the main focus of my business model. My podcast is my thing, is my thing, is my thing. And social media is just a tool to be able to build that relationship a little bit further for people to be able to, you know, maybe get to know you a little bit better. But that's kind of what it looks like for me. I do check my DMs on Instagram very infrequently, um, maybe once a week, maybe once every other week. I'm not really in there um, because face or Instagram is really more of the the suck for like the time suck for me. Like I can really get lost in the scroll on Instagram. Facebook is not so much like I only get sucked in if I click on the story. So <laughs> I just have to be intentional about not doing that. Go into my groups, showing up in there, engaging, you know, sending a message, checking my DMs or whatever. But that's really simple and I can do that. And that's what it looks like for me now. In the future, may it look different. I'm open to that. But right now in this season, that's what it looks like for me. I love that. And I know, and both PPU, Podcast Pro University, and Podcast to Profit, we learn some different ways to promote the podcast even outside of social media. But what does that look like in terms of promoting your business? Is it, you know, specifically through the podcast? Do you leverage email, text campaigns, or are there other ways outside of your Facebook group and obviously your your podcast platform that you kind of share the love or market your business, if you will? Yeah, so I 
show up on my podcast. And I have been podcasting for a little over a year. And I think I'm at like almost 34,000 downloads. Wow. So, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So that right there <clears throat> without social media is enough for me to say, okay, like give me confirmation that I'm in the right place. I do have an email list. It's a small email list. I'm just um, starting to really build that. And so that's all it looks like for me right now is my podcast. And I have, you know, created a downloadable for my nurses. It's called the Passive Income Toolkit. Mm -hmm. and, and so they can download that and get access to that. And then I can serve them, you know, through my email list that, that I'm building. But that's all I'm doing right now is just simply podcasting. Oh my goodness. And I love that you touched on the fact that you're even batch recording, like you've got one right after mm -hmm. this, right? And yeah. Uh, you in this one with me so that you can intentionally spend the entire summer with your children because essentially you're taking your time to record them all in advance, schedule them, upload them in a strategic way, and then be able to like live the life exactly where your feet are, like you said. So I would love to include the the link to your toolkit in the show notes. Okay. That's okay. okay. For yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Is it, would you say it would specifically be for someone in the medical um, community. Right. Yeah. So anybody can download it. It can, I have, so the way that um, I am currently, my podcast is the passive income nurse. So what I am currently doing is all passive. And so in the toolkit, like I said, it's, it's called the passive income toolkit for nurses, but literally anybody can download it, but that's who I'm niched into. And so that's who I speak to it's I have affiliate links in there to the courses actually that we were talking about I have podcast episodes linked up so you can go and listen like if you're wanting to diversify your income it can literally be for anyone um, who is looking to diversify their income create some freedom and create some flexibility in their schedule and so it really just gives them a couple of different avenues that they can go to be able to look at different options that may work for them. Oh my goodness. What an incredible resource. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. And I feel like people even other than nurses you know, downloaded and, and that would definitely be a great place. I can also share um, some information about all of the Steph Gaff's courses. Cause again, I having had an incredible experience in the ones I've taken, I can't speak highly enough. And, and of course I would love for, for you to get the credit for it, Brianne too. So I'll make sure to share <laughs> Brianne's uh, bit.ly link for those of you who might be interested in building a podcast or even, you know, even though Clarify Your Calling isn't necessarily geared towards that's just, you know, finding your calling for how to show up in the online space, whether that's podcast or not, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Steph Gass speaks to podcasting because that's, you know, that's kind of the business model that she's, that's worked for her and she's done really well with it. And so, yeah, you can totally take, you know, if blogging is your thing, so, you know, there, there's only three ways like you can grow and scale your business in the online space. And that's podcasting, that's YouTubing, or that's having a blog. And so you can choose three of those, whatever one, if you love to do video. And, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people are into, you know, you're in the makeup industry. And so like, if that's your thing, you can totally start a YouTube channel. But the key is just to have some kind of long form content that you can grow and scale. So we can build a business on social media. It's been done. Like you can build it there. But if you want to grow and scale, you have to have some kind of long form content that you own. And so it's just easy for busy moms to show up behind a microphone and not worry about having to get on video or worrying about how to write. And that, so that's just the platform that, that works best for, you know, for your lifestyle to be able to, to, to show up where it's easier for you. I love that so much. And and I love that you contrasted those online platforms versus social media, because obviously we don't own our social media. I feel like I hear a new story every single week for someone who completely loses it. Their account gets hacked and they lose it mm -hmm. and completely start over. Plus, I know, you know, that when you shoot, Steph says this, when you stop showing up on that platform, you stop getting the results from that area. And mm -hmm. so essentially your income, it's not passive. Your income is tied to your action and your efforts. And then to circle back around to some of the things that you said at the very beginning, honestly, we're, I think so many of us are just addicted. We're downright addicted to the scroll and to the consumption aspect of social media. And people in general aren't using it as a business tool. They're using it as like 
a time suck and it, it does create distraction and and it can take away from the things that are most important. Like you said, for you, that's that's your family. So I love, love that you contrasted those. So do you have any other advice as we wrap up for anyone who is trying to scale their business, anything that we haven't shared that that might serve someone who is like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm going to be like Brianne and just stop it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think it's important to mention, and I know you are a big, like you love She Works His Way and I'm a big yeah. advocate of them too. And so in that book, they make a really good point about, you know, when it comes to social media, I knew that I had to lay it down and God was calling me to do that. You may be in a place where, you know, you are maybe using it for your business and God is calling you to be really bold and be loud and share your message. And that's okay too. know that just because I laid it down completely does not mean that you have to lay it down completely. But I think the key here is to really evaluate like how much time you're spending on on the apps and really look at like is this serving you Mm. is it an idol in your life because when i was in it i would have never i'm like oh it's not an idol no it's not an idol but looking back i'm like it was it really was and so i think it takes some self-reflection and getting really honest with yourself because I was telling myself I'm investing in my business I'm investing in my business but yet I was robbing time for my kids like if my kids are my priority and those are there's like I value that do you value your phone more than you value your like you have to get honest with yourself and do a self-reflection and see what that looks like for you Because I can tell you, if you can set boundaries around the time that you spend on your phone, the time that you spend on social media, it is going to allow you to have so much more space, like mental space. I'm talking here, like you, you're going to have so much more space to really hear what God is trying to tell you to do, because I think we're so distracted we miss so much of what is right in front of our face because he's he's there all the time all the time and we have to be aware of it and if we're hyper distracted we're not going to be aware of the little things that he's putting in front of us every single day to take action on and so evaluate that for yourself what does that look like are you distracted are you idolizing your phone i know that sounds harsh but really like are you, is it an idol in your life? Be honest with yourself because when you can lay it down and you can open up that space and you can open up your eyes to opportunities, they're there. So my advice would just stop being distracted. (laughs) I love it so much. And I always like to preface all of these episodes with, you know, this, everybody is in a different season of their entrepreneurial journey. And there are multiple types of people that are listening at, you know, at any given point, some who are done with it, some who are like yeah. just trying to kind of balance it out. And then others who quite frankly love it. And and like yeah. you said, they've been called to use their voice on the platforms of social media, but they likely have people that they also serve who maybe is, is you know, they're looking to for another option for, for an alternative. I think you so beautifully touched on that. And actually Summer Phoebus and Michelle Myers that wrote the, the book, She Works His Way, have agreed to let me interview them. So I'm so <laughs> excited that episode will be so excited. Exactly what we want to talk about is diving a little deeper into that you know, what that looks like and how you even should know, because you shouldn't avoid it out of fear. Cause that's a whole other thing that some people, yes, they, they don't show up on social media because they're just scared or scared to put themselves right. out there. And that's not cool either. It's this is yeah. where the, the person just like you, Brianne, the mama who feels like that is taking away more. It, I actually got chills as you were talking. My favorite movie is the greatest showman. Mm-hmm. And in that song, I'm getting a chill to get to the, from now on. I love that part in the movie so much when he has this pivot that he's been building this thing for his family, but it's completely taken him away from his family. And so I think we all have to get really clear internally on, you know, that all, all of the tools that we're using and all of the, you know, the ways that we're spending our time in our business. And is it really serving the ones that are most important? And is it serving where your feet um, are? So. Oh my goodness, Brianne. 
Thank you so much for your time today and all of your beautiful advice and wisdom. So obviously you, we've already said where people can find you, the Passive Income Nurse Podcast, which of course I'll link in the show notes. Is there anywhere else? I know you've got a website as well, right? BrienneBell.com, is that right? I do. Um, yeah, it's kind of under construction at the moment. So if you want to come hang out with me, I've really been trying to network on LinkedIn. And I'm finding that that's where my nurses are. And so I have been trying to be more intentional about showing up over on LinkedIn. It's Brianne Bell. You can find me over there. And then also I can share with you, I can give you the link for the toolkit if anyone is interested in downloading that. And then that actually has the links in it for the affiliates for Clarify Your Calling and Podcast for University. Amazing. Oh my goodness. So much goodness. I feel like you brought the gold today, Brianne, for those who are like, okay, I need something tangible. Tell me what to do. And whether or not they are a nurse, which I know we certainly have some amazing nurses listening as, as we speak. But even if you're not a nurse, I feel like these tools would be so valuable. So thank you again for your time today, Brianne. I just have loved getting to know you, girl. Thank you so much, Heather. It was fun. Yay. I'm so grateful for your time with me today. Feel free to check out heatherkburge.com for all the scoop on all the things. Also, I've got a huge favor. If you found any value from today's episode, would you mind leaving me a quick review? Or even better, share with a friend by clicking those three little dots at the bottom of your screen. Sending you big hugs.